Endurance Junkie Podcast, episode 92. Junkies, what's up? Thanks for joining me on a new episode of the Endurance Junkie Podcast, the show where I will be interviewing some of the fastest, smartest, and most inspiring people active in the endurance world today. First show of 2018, so uh, yeah, I would just like to uh, quickly take the opportunity to uh, wish each and every one of you a stress and injury free 2018. And uh, yeah, may all your endurance goals be met, your uh, dreams be fulfilled, and uh, your health be good. Um, yeah, I think we're kicking off 2018 with a, a great guest. We've got Terenzo Bozzoni on. But before we get going, I would just uh, like to uh, let you know that if you like these little interviews um, and you don't want to miss any future episodes, you can just uh, head over to iTunes or Stitcher and simply subscribe to the show. I would also like to thank uh, each and everyone who has left a rating and review there. That's uh, much appreciated. And uh, yeah, if you haven't done so yet, please consider leaving me one. And uh, yeah, see it as a, as a New Year's gift. Alright, Terenzo Bozzoni, uh, he's a professional triathlete from New Zealand, and uh, yeah, he races uh, primarily in long-distance, non-drafting events. He's known as the hardest working man in triathlon, uh, queuing up back-to-back races and seemingly getting better and better with each one. Now, since his best ever finish on the Big Island, uh, with the sixth place, he has been on a bit of a roll, uh, winning 70.3 Los Cabos. Uh, he had a very close second place finish at the Island House Triathlon, uh, second place finish at 70.3 Bahrain and then uh, a very successful defense of his Ironman Western Australia title. So hi, Terenzo, thanks for, uh, for coming on the show. Yeah, we're taping this on December 26th, so yeah, how has your Christmas been, and uh, how has your holiday been so far? Cheers, Peter. Uh, yeah, great, great to be on the show. Um, it's Yeah, it's been good. It's about, well, this is the start of my fourth week after my last race, so fourth week of off-season, and been having a great time with the family. We had a, we had a good Christmas in Auckland, and... Um, We've just come over to Waiheke Island, which is a 30-minute ferry ride out of out of Auckland City, and that's uh, where my my wife's parents live. So, just spending a bit of time here in the in the sun and on the beach. So, looking looking forward to another week of of downtime. Yeah, is that your typical uh, yeah off season uh, routine? Going back home and, and spending time with the family. Yeah, yeah, we uh, I mean we, we we travel most of the year, so so when uh, when we're not traveling for for triathlons. It's quite nice just to to spend a bit of time at home and catch up with friends and family and uh, I guess get on top of housework. Yeah, yeah cool stuff. Um, yeah, maybe we can can backtrack a bit uh, and and talk a bit about yourself first and for the people that might not know you. Um, yeah, yeah can, cool. can, can you tell us a bit about your sporting background growing up and and how you got involved in triathlon? Yeah, cool. So I was I was born in South Africa in '85 and uh, yeah, I guess growing up we were my brother and I were into a lot of sports. We did karate, kung fu, soccer, cricket, tennis, uh, swimming. We yeah, we, we were pretty active, both of us. And um, we, we actually moved to New Zealand in '96 when I was 11 years old. And um, at that stage, kind of started focusing more seriously on on swimming. So the other sports took a took a back back foot in a sense. And um, I yeah, we we're giving I was given a good good nudge. I was a really good breaststroke swimmer. Um, and uh, one summer when I was 13 years old, we were on holiday and I was wakeboarding behind a boat and uh, I tried to do a backflip and ended up landing on my head and burst my eardrum. So, um, yeah, I had a surgery and the doctor the doctor said, yeah, not allowed in the water for a while. So I had to have a break from swimming, which was – it kind of came at a good time because I was probably getting to the stage where, where swimming was, uh, yeah, starting to get a little bit, little bit boring by itself. Um, and – but but of course, being being such an active, uh, yeah, when I was grow- being so active when I was growing up, I I had to find something to do, and um, I like running, so I did, I've done a bit of running, and I wanted to do something different, so I I actually borrowed a friend's bicycle and did a duathlon, so run, bike, run, and it was uh, the the high school championships back in back in Auckland, and um, yeah, I was I definitely way, way off the pace, nowhere near the front, but. I just loved it. I, I loved the training for it. I, I loved the um, the atmosphere of the competition, and and I just yeah got I kind of yeah dove dove right into the sport. And when I was allowed to start swimming again, I started doing triathlons, and uh, yeah never never really looked back. My um, first world championships was in '99 in Calais, France, the duathlon world championships. I think I finished 19th, was the youngest in the field, and. Um, 
in yeah 2000 2001 was my first uh first world title so 2001 won the duathlon world junior champs 2002 i won the duathlon and triathlon junior world champs and then 2003 the junior world triathlon world champs which was um down in in queenstown new zealand so it was quite nice to win my last junior world title in uh yeah, in, in my own country. Yeah, yeah, I think that's that's when I first uh, started hearing of you. I think you were uh, battling one of our countrymen, Peter Cruz. I don't know if you yeah, remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I, I think I was you know, following that race live and yeah, cheering for for Peter. But uh, yeah, I think you uh, you ended up winning. So yeah, kudos for you there. Um, <laughs> Peter, uh, he he ended up having a really good career. He, he when did he stop racing? What just a few years ago? No? Yeah, he did it. Yeah, he uh, he went to the Olympics. Uh, I think he was the first Belgian to ever qualify for the Olympics in, in triathlon. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah he had a yeah, pretty good solid, solid race on the ITU uh, circuit. So yeah, yeah. Um, yeah was... So, so how was your progression then? Did, did you um, did you become really successful pretty quickly, or uh, did it go um, yeah step by step? Um, I guess over the, over the junior ranks, I, I I was yeah definitely definitely got got some good results. But um, the transition into into the open ranks was 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 a little tougher than I would have liked. Um, I, def- I still had some some pretty good finishes. I think I was fourth at the Honolulu World Cup in uh, 2005. Um, that year, I also finished third at what the Wildflower Half Ironman. Uh, the following year, 2006, I won won the Wildflower Half Ironman and broke the record, which still stands. Um, uh, what what happened after that? Uh, 2007 was was a big year on the ITU scene for me. I was um, that was kind of our, our big qualification for the 2008 Beijing Olympics, and I um, yeah I really really wanted to qualify. I'd been I tried for Athens, missed out in Athens in 2004. So so Beijing was uh, next on the cards, and I uh, finished seventh at World Champs, and it was in Hamburg. Um, and unfortunately, our selection race was two weeks later in Beijing, and ended up not not having a great race. Um, and yeah, the by the end of yeah by the end of the selection period, um, yeah, I, I didn't make the team. And in 2008, I decided to step up to the the yeah long course and and move away from the I guess the politics that that came with the the Olympic distance racing and and, and the Olympics. So um, end of 2008, I I won the 70.3 World Champs and a whole bunch of races through the year. Um, but yeah, no, just uh, just I guess really, really enjoyed and, and embraced the the culture of the long distance racing, and uh, it, it I found it really suited suited my my strengths. Um, I mean, I was yeah a solid runner and a solid swimmer, but but uh, on the ITU level, I was I was I was pretty good on the bike, and uh, with with a little bit of work, I managed to really develop my biking even more. So so the uh, non drafting aspect of the sport. Uh, played into my my hands really well. Yeah. Okay. Uh, how's your uh, yeah your relationship with coaching been? Yeah. So I've um I've worked with uh, John John Ackland um pretty much my whole career. Uh, John and I've we got teamed up right right at the beginning when I was trying to get dispensation to race my first uh, the 1999 duathlon world championships because because I was too young and uh, the New Zealand New Zealand selection committee said you had to get approval from a coach and and John was uh, one of the best physiologists around so uh, that that kind of started our relationship and and we developed from there um just I guess growing and, and achieving goals together um, working with a uh, still working with John a bit and also working with with a, a friend of mine Dan Plews, um mm. who's yeah he's a friend and, and training partner so we, we get out to a bit of training and uh, yeah just uh, yeah he helps me out with a few ideas and, and monitoring stuff yeah so how do you guys uh, pick your races and, and, and build your, uh, your your year plan yeah everything um i mean everything's kind of based around you have your your big goals at the end of the year and then um which is yeah kona of late mm-hmm. um so so kona become becomes the big goal and uh basically just periodize everything off that yeah okay and, and uh, every race in between let's just uh, see what where you are in the world and then see where you can fit in yeah yeah i mean it's nice nice to race some of some of the races that that look after you and and that you like to do and uh of course with with good prize money is always good when when you're racing well but um yeah it needs to needs to really fit into the overall scheme of things no okay now yeah you guys are all pretty pretty active on on social media uh, yeah, twitter and, and, and instagram and stuff like that and um we see a lot of very nice pictures passing along um running along the beaches and stuff like that uh, <laughs> um, so, so it all looks pretty glamorous um is it as glamorous as, as we think it is the life of a pro athlete 
Oh yeah, yeah. Most of the time, I'm flying on a private on my private jet, and yep. um, yeah, got um, umbrella girls with me before races. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it's uh, when when things are going when things are going well, it's it's uh, it's definitely a, a great lifestyle, and and uh, it's it's a lot of fun because because uh, you can for me when when I can ask my body to deliver something and and it delivers, then then that that's a pretty pretty awesome feeling when you've spent your whole life working towards that um but i mean let's face it as as professional athletes we we don't win more races than we win there's there's i mean on on average probably the top athletes winning three four maybe five races a year where they're standing on the line for 12 starts so it's uh it's yeah i mean even even at the at the prime of your career you're you're not winning winning everything um so so when you do get it right and, and you win things it feels really good but but there are a lot of times where where you feel like you're hitting your head against the wall. Uh, I mean, you, you sometimes get plagued with injury after injury, or or get sick, and uh, and just and sometimes things just just don't don't gel. They uh, yeah, that's, sometimes they just don't don't come out properly. Yeah, how can you make it work with it with a family, a young family like you, you do? <laughs> yeah, it's uh, so we, we had our second child this year in April, and it's it's definitely been a big learning curve for my wife and I. Uh, especially my wife, my wife works full time. She's got her own own company, um, Bow and Bala. So she, um, she basically designs and manufactures jewelry for young girls. And um, there's times where she can travel on the road, but there's other times where she has to be home. And um, I'm I guess I'm very lucky in a sense that that she knows my 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 training, my recovery comes first. And, and she'll um yeah make make sure that i mean we we did two week uh, two month training camp in San Diego leading into Kona and uh she she managed to come away with me and and she'd make sure every day when I finished training she took the kids out for after she'd had the kids all day she took the kids out for another hour or so while while I had a nap and uh and just yeah recovery came first and, and my training came first and and uh, i guess i'm i'm catching up for it now now that it's off season i'm uh yeah, I'm in charge of the kids, the the night feeds, the the waking up to the screaming babies, and uh, try, trying to let her catch up on some sleep. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah, that's really important <laughs> to, to keep the balance in the, in the relationship as well. Um, so yeah, yeah but besides so the, the sacrifices, I guess in, in your family life, what other sacrifices do you feel you need to make to to live this uh, this lifestyle? Um, I mean, it's I guess sacrifices in a sense, but it's also for me it i mean every everything i do do in my life is is based around I guess finding finding that that peak level of high performance and and um and i guess i've i've grown i mean i i started when i was 11 12 years old i was swimming quite competitively so so i don't really know the i guess what's on the other side of the fence so much i've uh, i've kind of always always been been very focused and very determined to achieve my goals and and um I mean, i've got 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 a good good group of friends that understand that they're they're in similar situations and um and my wife we've been together 13 years now so so she she understands that um yeah probably i guess there, there are times where where you want to go out and hang out with your friends and and party till the early hours of the morning but um that's kind of yeah you can do that once maybe once a year or twice a year and even even then, it takes me it takes me a, mu- a week to recover from that. But um, and I mean, and then with kids, it's it's just just puts makes things a lot tougher. And uh, I mean, just having having two kids who rely fully on you, um, it's uh, yeah, it's definitely definitely an eye opener and uh, and yeah, a cha- change of lifestyle. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. How how has your 2017 season been? Um, can you talk a bit about that? Yeah. No. It's um. I mean, this, this year started off started off pretty pretty rough i uh yeah just i mean kick, kicked off the year I, I, well, I finished 2016 with some with some great form i uh, broke the uh, ironman record at ironman um, w western australia record yep. and um and yeah just uh kind of started started 2017 hoping hoping i'd be on the same foot but unfortunately got got quite sick at the beginning of the year so i had to miss out on dubai 70.3 um ironman new zealand didn't didn't go to didn't go to plan um ended up getting injured heading up to the challenge championships in samarin um so pulled out on the run 
uh, and had six weeks off running uh, before doing Challenge Roth, which which was not a bad race actually, considering considering the the month and a half preparation. Mm-hmm. Um, so finished finished fifth at Challenge Roth, and, and that was a really exciting race. It was my first time first time racing there, and yeah, it's a pretty racer. amazing experience. Yeah, um, and then <laughs> came home, uh, picked up pneumonia off my son Ooh. and uh so i had to pull out of the itu long distance world champs and uh, 70.3 world champs and and just put all my eggs in the current basket and uh yeah i did cozumel 70.3 uh three weeks leading into kona and just as a yeah hot race bit of preparation the race the race went quite well um it was it was tough but uh yeah managed to get through on the run take take the win there and um and then arrived in kona and had had my best performance on the island with a sixth place yeah okay um i guess yeah the rest of the then <laughs> came home and surprised my wife by saying yep i think i'm gonna keep racing racing for another month and um november and the start of december were uh what i'd had uh los carbos 70.3 which mm-hmm. i won um the island house invitational triathlon which a buddy of mine luke mckenzie puts on yeah. um over in the bahamas and uh finished second there by 0.4 of a second and in, in the sprint finish to ben canute yep that was um, a really clash of the the short course distance uh, guys <laughs> and, and the long course guy huh? yeah 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 did, <laughs> so did you expect pretty... to do uh, that that good there no no um i was yeah i guess i mean i, I the last year i finished um fourth place Mm-hmm. And I thought, yeah, I mean, if I could if I could replicate that performance in in the standard of field that they had there, uh, that would be that would be pretty good. But um, yeah, just just felt stronger and stronger. And and on the last day, uh, yeah, I guess I was I was just in a position where I could I could ask my body to deliver, and, and it just kept delivering. Um, unfortunately, with the lack of uh, short course racing and um, and sprint finishes I've had over the last last decade, I um, kind of didn't didn't go through didn't go through the finishing with the yeah the, the last corner and the and the finish shoot so probably could have positioned myself a little bit better going into the sprint mm. but um oh well, yeah no it was it was uh although i was second it was definitely a, a victory for me um from there went on to bahrain the following weekend the second yeah. place in bahrain uh to uh, christian blumenfeld who yeah first first 70.3 for him and and man he's he's a strong athlete he ran through uh I mean, I went through 10Ks in about 34 minutes. I think he was through 10Ks in 32 minutes um, <laughs> after after a pretty solid bike. I think he was just over two hours, like two hours and one minute for the 90-kilometer bike. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was, yeah, that was that was a cool race. Um, I, mean, I really enjoy racing up there. The, the, the flat roads work quite well for me, a little bit of wind. Um, and, of course, we're on the Bahrain Endurance 13 team, which with his uh, shake high, shake. Uh, his Highness Sheikh Nasser, mm-hmm. um, and he ended up qualifying for Kona as well, which yeah, which which was quite nice. So it'll uh, there'll be a be a strong Bahrain Endurance 13 contingency in the, in Kona. Uh, finished off with uh, the following weekend with Ironman Western Australia, and managed to defend my title there. Um, and that was a great month of racing, and now I'm having a great month of not racing, <laughs> not training either. <laughs> yeah, good stuff. Yeah, so what are the goals for 2018? Everything uh, back towards Kona? Yeah, everything. Everything's going to be revolved around Kona. Um, still, yeah, just just working through working through the plan, trying to decide on on the on the strategy and uh, where we're going to base ourselves and what races we'll tackle on the way through. Mm. Uh, but yeah, but. Um, Definitely felt felt quite happy with my final preparation leading into Kona this year, and and uh, we'll try and try and replicate that and try and get an extra five ten percent out of the body on race day. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, you've competed in Kona quite a number of times. Uh, you've had some uh, some good races there and some not so good races. Have, have you figured out what what went well this year that that made you uh, yeah get your your best result uh, so far? Yeah, <laughs> mainly mainly not so good races there. I've um yeah I mean. 2009 i was 11th 2010 20th um and then actually had a had a bit of a uh a break from kona and mm-hmm. um it was a 2014 i finished i didn't finish pulled out on the bike uh, 2016 pulled out in the energy lab on the run so so i guess just just went into the race this year with uh, a lot not lower expectation but just i guess i didn't put the the pressure on myself uh that i had in previous years and uh, just, I guess the the first goal was to actually finish the race this year, and um, yeah, and it just, uh, I guess, just gave me the opportunity to race a little bit more within myself. 
Yeah, okay. Yeah, so you, you've won, obviously, a lot of 70.3 races, a lot of Ironmans around the world. Um, what do you have left that you want to achieve in, in, in your career? Winning Hawaii is definitely a big big one on my on my must do list. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, if I, I mean, and, and after racing there this year and and uh, just seeing seeing a solid performance, I I feel it's it's uh yeah it's not it's not a long shot. It's definitely within reach. Um, so just yeah, a few years, uh, hopefully hopefully two three more years of um of good focus and uh, good direction, and I should be able to should be able to achieve that goal but um other than that I, I really enjoy racing uh enjoy enjoy the competitive nature of of the sport and um and just and always just trying to find find that uh that couple extra percent improvement here and there yeah okay and you obviously race a lot um how, how do you guys re- recover from you know these 70.3 races you, you seem to be doing sometimes you know these blocks <laughs> where you do like two three uh, in, in two three weeks time yeah, no, I definitely. I, I think I seem to bounce back from the seventy point three distance races better than better than I seem to recover from uh, short, the shorter distance stuff. Um, I, I mean, the big big things for me are just yeah, eating well um, and and sleeping well, trying to get onto time zones as quickly as possible, and uh, and get good quality sleep. Um, and yeah, just just turning over a little bit of light training during the week, so. I'll, I'll still train and uh, and do do a reasonable amount, but it'll just be fairly light until the final couple of days where where I open up the engine and uh, get race pace going again. Mm, okay. Um, yeah, well, what's the, the greatest piece of advice that you've received in your uh, triathlon career? Um, oh. <laughs> it's it's probably a, probably a, probably the simple the simple answers the the best one that, that sticks with me is um yeah just just have fun out there have fun doing what you're doing and uh and at times i guess you get you get caught up in the moment and and caught up in in focusing on winning races instead of instead of uh focused on i guess the fact the, the reasons why you do it and uh and i mean for me the reasons are i i, I really like trying to trying to be the best me possible and uh and and doing triathlon i guess is is pretty challenging and or very challenging and uh and there's so many obstacles and so many moving parts that are uh, yeah that, that when you get it right it, it feels pretty special. Yeah. So it's still always fun for you. It's it's not a job. Um no no there's there's, there's times it feels like a job. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um and the, and those those are generally the tough times but um yeah but but yeah there's there's I mean the, the the majority of the time it's it's a lot of fun. I, I mean even now in my off season I'm still getting out for a couple hours of training a day and or exercise a day. Um, I just, yeah, I, I just like the way doing doing exercise makes me feel, and uh, and I, I think my wife would probably agree that I'm a much much better person to be around when I do a little bit of exercise. Yeah. So yeah, after your competitive <laughs> career, you definitely will continue being uh, being active. Yeah, if the body still works, I guess. <laughs> yeah, okay. You got any plans already? What are you gonna do after you retire? Um, not too sure. Um, I guess. Yeah. You wanna stay within I, the sport. My, yeah, I mean, I'd still like to be able to do some something within the sport and uh, and probably something something outside of the sport. But um, yeah, to be honest, I I, mean, I I have a few ideas in the back of my head, but I haven't given it too much too much thought. I um, I'm, uh, although I have been racing for a long time, I'm only 32 years old, so I've still I think I've still got a little bit of time time up my sleeve. Uh, so long as the body holds out, touch wood. Yeah. Okay. So, what do you see as your biggest yeah. achievement in, in your career so far, and and uh, what's your your biggest disappointment? Um, uh, I I wouldn't actually I, I I don't think I could say there's any disappointments. Um, thinking about it now, I I um yeah, I mean any any bad races or any any uh, any times where 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 I haven't done what, what I've what I've set out to do, uh, I definitely take that as as a bigger as a big learning curve but you definitely learn more when you make mistakes um so that that kind of helps me helps me develop and help help me helps helps me develop into the person i am and the person i'm going to be uh biggest achievement um whew, uh, probably ironman western australia last year um 2016 winning that uh first first ironman victory uh went seven hours 51 fastest time ever by a new zealand or australian um fastest time ever in in the southern hemisphere and i think 10th fastest ironman of all time so it was 
it was definitely uh, after try after starting my Ironman career in 2009, it was definitely definitely a huge achievement for me. Yeah, even more than a world title and uh, 70.3 distance. Um, uh, again, it's it's hard to kind of say one thing over the other. I mean, yeah, yeah. my my last world world title was in 2008. Um, and that was, I mean, that, that, that was huge and that'll always, that'll always be, be big for me. But, um, I mean, I, yeah, I guess my, I mean, I've been trying to, trying to win an Ironman race for eight years and put a lot of, a lot of energy, a lot of time into it. And, and to finally, I guess, start, start, start racing the way, uh, the way I, I see where, where I see my ability and, uh, and, and, and just learning how to race Ironman is, is a pretty, yeah, pretty big step forward for me. Yeah. No, so you said it. You, you've been racing for quite a long time. Um, how has how has the, the the sport evolved in these last couple of years and competitiveness uh, in 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 our man? Oh man, the com- competitiveness is just yeah. Every, every year, it kind of seems to step up a little bit. And uh, I mean, at the, at the moment, I mean, we've got the likes of of Gomez stepping up, um, Christian Blumenfeld, Alistair Brownlee stepping up to the seventy point three distance as well. Um, and uh, Lionel Sanders, Sebastian Keenley, both those guys, their their swimming has um has but has developed. That they're, they're they're strong strong riders, and they're they're also some of the fastest runners in the sport. Patrick Langer, um, uh, his I mean his marathon time is is pretty incredible. Um, Jan Frodeno kind of I guess he sets sets a new benchmark with how how he operates and and how he uh, I guess goes about achieving achieving his goals. So it's it's definitely become a lot more professional. Um, Whereas back back in the day it was yeah pretty I guess pretty relaxed and and more of a lifestyle choice than a than a profession and mm-hmm. and it's great having having those guys in in the sport I guess yeah just just creates a more professional environment and also uh, also motivates you to to be the best you you can be. Yeah. So do you think that uh, Ironman World Best Time will will, will drop even further? Oh, it's got to. It's um. I mean, yeah, yeah. Well. It's actually hard to say that. With uh, what, what did Jan go in Roth uh, last year? He was uh, seven thirty-five. Yes. Yeah, like <laughs> um, it's it's hard to see hard to see anything faster than that uh, in the near future. But um, yeah, I mean Tim Tim Don's low seven forties. I think I think on a yeah on a um, on a good course with with good conditions and uh, and 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 good competition. I think uh, I think that's definitely with within reach. Yeah, yeah, you definitely see that sub eight is becoming quite a bit of a standard uh, these days to win an Ironman. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, yeah, thanks. Thanks for your time, Lorenzo. Uh, thanks for so much for your time. Uh, how can people get in touch with yeah. you if they if they want to? Pleasure. Thanks. Thanks, Peter. Thanks for having me on the show. Um, yeah. Um, I mean, my my Instagram handle is uh, Terenzo one T E R E N Z O one. Um, Twitter's the same, Terenzo1. Uh, yeah, become a fan on Facebook, facebook.com slash Terenzo Bizzoni. Um, otherwise, yeah, uh, management at Terenzo.com would be the email address. All right, cool stuff. I'll put those links up on the show notes page. Um, yeah, feel free to give some love to your sponsors. Yeah, thanks a lot, Peter. Oh. Hello? Sorry, what was that? Sorry. Uh, yeah, feel free to give some love to your sponsors. <laughs> oh, yeah, cool. Sorry. No, no problem. <laughs> I missed that. Um yeah, no. Uh, so yeah, I guess I guess the the big sponsors who who've been a part part of the team for for some time now are are two times you and um, and Argon eighteen bikes. So I'm pretty 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 lucky to have have them. Argon's kind of developed some some put put some really good development into their time trial bikes, so it makes makes it really fast and, and comfortable. Um, yeah, Cliff Bar's been been a partner of mine uh, for for some time as, as well as Aquasphere wetsuits, and uh, of course on the Bahrain Endurance thirteen team. No, I'll put those links up as well. Anything else you want to plug? Um, no, no. Thanks a lot for having me on the show, and uh, I hope everyone's had a great Christmas. And uh, I guess by the time the show goes live, um, everyone's kicked off 2018 in uh, in the best way possible. Yeah, cool. Well, thanks for that. Um, yeah, got one final question for you. Um, we finished the interview, and you step outside the house there, and uh, you find a lottery ticket that ends up winning ten million dollars. What do you do? <laughs> Mate, this is we're in New Zealand. If it's if it's hitting ten million dollars, no one's won it for about six months here. <laughs> <laughs> no, ten, um, ten million US. Ten million US. Uh, ten million US. Um, I, poor, um, I think I'd I'd definitely keep 
keep doing doing triathlon uh probably in a much much better way um yeah just just being able to pick and choose a little bit more a little less pressure and and be able to do it in a way that um that's more accommodating for the whole family um uh, and the beach house i think just uh, staying here look, looking looking off the balcony at my wife's parents place down at the beach uh definitely be nice to have a place uh place close or on the beach somewhere yeah okay definitely uh, back in new zealand um we we do like new zealand uh, we also really like southern california um yeah like uh re- areas around los angeles or san- down in san diego down by encinitas mm. had a lot of fun there uh, also trained trained a bit with jan Fredino and nick castellin in, in girona um and that's probably some of the best best training in the world so um maybe maybe a house in each place but i guess 10 million dollars nowadays doesn't, probably doesn't get you that many houses yeah no that's true <laughs> that's true <laughs> well invest yeah. invest wisely first and then uh, <laughs> invest in bitcoin for a while and then yeah 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 that should work all right thanks for your time yep. Terenzo, and uh, yeah enjoy the rest of your holidays and uh and uh, have, a, have a good new year yeah thanks peter you too Junkies, thanks for listening to this episode with uh, Terenzo Bozzoni. Now, if you have uh, suggestions for uh, possible future guests, uh, you can always uh, shoot me an email at uh, peter at junkiepodcast.com. That's uh, peter at junkiepodcast.com. And uh, yeah, I'll try to make that uh, happen as fast as possible. All right, thanks again for listening. And until next time, when I will be chatting with ultra runner John Kelly about his uh, Barkley Marathons finish. Cheers.